ask you what is your wish list. If you have one problem that you wish um, technology or innovation can resolve, uh, my next question is what keeps you awake at night? Well, I would like, well, in my wish list, I would like warehouses to be better connected to the outside and for better connectivity from, say, from ports or from airports to warehouses. And uh, I would like to give an example. You see, it's quite common that we have container trucks um, coming over to the warehouse and the prime mover leaves the container and goes, goes away. And he comes back probably the next day or later in the evening to pick it up. That's two trips. But if we have more seamless warehouse technology or we, or we um, implement more seamless warehouse uh, management as what we are talking about today, the prime mover just comes with regular palletized goods, we load and unload in 10-15 minutes and they just go off. Two trips becomes one. We can save our costs, which means the logistics companies or the logistics provider doesn't charge so much because he just has one trip. The prime movers are better utilized and we are not having empty prime movers moving on the road. So this is something I wish would happen. I'm going to come back to what keeps you awake in a moment. Marco, I mean, you've talked to organizations, small to medium-sized businesses. We've got to justify the expense of uh, upgrading our IT systems. How do we do it? How do we do what Rich is talking about? How do we get to see the value in, in technology? I think today the beauty is uh, that you have a lot of uh, cloud-based systems, so you don't need to start from scratch to put all the investment down. Uh, the costs are coming down? So the costs come down, they become more flexible. Right? So, yeah, you have software that you can pay per order. Yeah? So this also allows SME companies uh, uh, to, to participate in professional IT systems which were 10 years back were impossible because the investment and uh, the, the up, uh, up investment you have to put down first would be too too huge. And so this cloud solution makes it possible to have access as SMEs uh, to professional systems from Europe, US and, uh, and use them. Yeah. Ken, any comments? I'm going to ask you the, the second question, actually, because I think this is a conversation that you have every day with your customers, right? What keeps them awake at night in their supply chain? Uh, from my perspective, uh, what keeps uh, supply chain providers like us in Singapore awake is uh, people. Because for us, we face a very huge shortage of uh, workers uh, in Singapore, and uh, we are unable to take on additional business due to the uh, shortage of manpower. Um, and also the people that we are dealing with uh, from a service provider point of view, we're dealing with uh, warehouse assist assistants, forklift drivers, uh, truck drivers, these are uh, the, probably the lower educated uh, part of the uh, population. And uh, managing these people are very tough. So I would say that the uh, thing that keeps me up uh, awake at night is managing people. Because ultimately, this is what the, our business is all about. Uh, my services is only as good as the last driver on the ground. I can be saying that I promise that you'll be on time, you'll be, we are the best logistics service provider, but ultimately, we depend on the guy on the ground to execute it. Thank you. Uh, let's do it. Let's get into this people subject. It's a highly emotional subject. It's subjective. Um, we all have a different view of the world. But Tali, I'm, I'm going to start with you because you touched on in your speech, you know, your, your parents almost had heart attacks and uh, were very concerned when you said you were going to get into this, this whole business called logistics. Ken, you just talked about it keeps you awake at night and it is an element of uh, business enabler. Soft skills, right? We're, we're very, very good at putting people through universities, particularly in Asia, and giving them lots of technical skills. But supply chain is a lot about soft skills. It's about interacting, it's about influence, it's about negotiating, communicating, how we interact, and clearing those obstacles and bickering as you described as there. Uh, are we actually doing the right thing in our education processes that put people for the soft skills needed in logistics? Are we doing that well enough? There are three things that I always tell supply chain professionals. They really have to be good in terms of skills and competencies. And these are three things that I always rem remind them of. The first thing that a supply chain professional should really have is what I call selling skills. Second thing is project management skills. And the third is they get to know a little bit more about logistics, supply chain, and procurement. So what makes me awake at night is like, when I run or large organizations, one of the things that I really try to train people is like, I don't have to train them about procurement. They know this stuff. They've been doing like day in, day out. I can only compliment. But one of the things that's really lucky from our profession, because 
we are the people that are put there. The reason why we are in logistics or supply chain, from my history, which may not be true, is like they put you there because you may, you may have come from accounting that has done a lot of not so good work in balancing the, the accounts. You may be a salesman who doesn't meet your quota. You know, you may be somebody who, who's an engineer that hasn't actually provided the right blueprints for the company. So that's why you're in supply chain. That's your punishment. You know, so that's your punishment. It's like so you do what, the short straw, right? <laughs> what, what we're really trying to put in place here is an awareness to, to the business and to the government. That they should really enforce a level of certification for their professionals. Just like when you entrust yourself to a doctor when you are sick. If there's a there's a, a, a doctor, when you need care, you actually go to a nurse. When you need a midwife, you can go to a midwife. You go to a lot of certified bodies, you know. But the real thing that can really improve our profession is like when they actually see that they are professionals because they, they lack the, we lack the credibility, you know, on, on this particular area. I, I, can talk, I can talk a lot on this particular subject, but again, going back to it, what are the, what are, what are the three important things that we need to really impart? It's, it's very true that soft skills are very important. We know how to move things, trucks, warehouse, to do a lot of cross docking, inventory turnaround. But the problem is like we don't know how to influence, which is very important. Influencing that our ideas are the correct ideas. Because who, who, who knows it better than ourselves? Because we are the people on the ground. But we need to share that to, our, to the one who's going to sign the check. The other thing is like people lack the project management skill. We know how to do day-to-day -day transactions, but we don't know how to build business cases that would sell and create the impact. So that our salaries will be a little bit more placed on a higher, higher echelon because there's an opportunity to actually, you know, uh, derive a lot of value from your ideas. The third thing is like, you have to demonstrate capability on the area where you're actually assigned in the area of logistics, supply chain, or procurement. Because this is going to be a very big field. You cannot be jack of all trades, master of nothing. You really have to show competence and, um, and uh, actually practice the, the right level of um, execution for your respective organization. Andrew, your guys have been marching the halls for the last few days, looking very polished. How is it that you retain your staff, your staff in such a highly competitive market like Malaysia? Because that's not easy. Dicky, so good salesman. Well, we just, well, first of all, MHD Mag has a good name, so everyone wants to come in, isn't it? <laughs> Gotta have a plug. Well, how do we, how do we keep them motivated? It's, it's a challenge, especially in logistics. I mean, of course, um, MHD Mag, if you, if you look at our guys here, they are not just handling logistic products, but uh, all sorts of material handling equipment. But if, when we talk about logistics in particular, it um, it is a bit of a challenge sometimes because um, it is difficult to to change the mindset of, of uh, many people in logistics when we try the same old tried methods. But to answer your question, how do we keep them motivated by having motivated stuff by having uh, newer so, technology. So energizing and, yeah. and bringing a passion to what the leadership does and cascading that down. Is that the yeah, same? yeah, it's something like that. But uh, I actually want to touch on something else that uh, it's, it's along the same lines uh, on logistics. And to keep our people, to get the best people into logistics, I mean, we always, we are talking now about the third, fourth rated people and people who don't want to do anything else, you know, or are not able, haven't done well in engineering or in accountancy or something like that, and they get thrown into logistics. Maybe it's because we don't really, um, we're not really pushing so much in the sense that um, for us to improve our logistics in Malaysia or in Southeast Asia, there needs to be a good push from above. There needs to be good policies. And we do have, yes, I agree with uh, our panelists that our government is doing something, but we need to have uh, a strong push. If you look at the example of, uh, of Europe, you would see there's, there are a lot of policies and laws that need to be met. And that's why you would see cases where uh, they try and maximize the usage of their trucks. They try and maximize the usage of their warehouse. They, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of push to have more and more storage spaces, spaces in a certain given area. And people usually don't, don't want to be the first one to try that unless there is a push from above. You know, push from government or push from policy makers. And that I think it's, it's very important to keep us in logistics moving forward in our country.